Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about BGT. Those three words refers to bipolar junction transistor. And the first transistor was invented in 1947 by three scientists, John Burden, Walter Bratton, and William Chuckling. And those three scientists had been awarded with Nobel Prize for that invention. So now you can guess how important this topic is. So let's get started. Bipolar junction transistor. If you want to know where that name comes from, you need to know some information about its physical structure. And if you want to know about its physical structure, you need to know some information about its semiconductor materials. I know that might sound disturbing, but I will try to make it clear as possible. BGT is made of B-type and N-type semiconductor materials such as silicon or germanium with atomic impurities. The type of impurity determines the type of the semiconductor and the process of adding impurity is called doping. We are not going to talk a lot about B-type and N-type but all you need to know is that B-type has more holes than electronics and the N-type has more electronics than the holes. So let's talk about the physical structure of the BGT. There are two types of the transistor, NPN and PMP. In case of NPN type transistor, the B-type semiconductor material is sandwiched between two N-type semiconductors material. And in the PMP type, the N-type is sandwiched between two P-type semiconductor material. There are three regions as shown. The largest region is called collector region, and the smallest one is called base region, and the last one is called the emitter region. And there are three terminals connected to each region, and each one is called the same as the region with which is connected to. The same things will happen with PMP transistor, the smallest region called base and the largest region called collector and the last one called emitter. And the most used transistor is the NPN because the mobility of electrons is more than the mobility of the holes. As you know, each electrical component have a simple which is used to write it down on paper fast and easy and if anyone see it he will notice that's a transistor and here is the symbol of the transistor shown after talking about the physical structure and n-type and p-type semiconductor material now we can talk where that name come from as you said before the transistor is made of n-type and p-type material and the p-type got more holes than electronics in it and the holes is positively charged. On the other hand, the n-type material got more electronics than the holes, and the electronics is negatively charged. That means that we have two types of polarities, that's why we called it bipolar. And the junction, because we have two junction between the n and p-type and p and n-type, as shown in the picture. And the transistor, it contains two words, transfer and resistor. And the transfer because there are electrons transferred from one area or one region to another. And the resistor because the difference between the resistance from each region. So let's start with NPN transistor. And as I said before, the largest area called collector region. And the smallest one called base region. And the last one called a metal region. Uh, we want to operate this transistor in active mode. And if we want to make this operation happen, we need to make the junction 1 in forward base. And that happens when the E is connected to the negative terminal and the P is connected to the positive terminal. And that forward potential called VEB. And we have to make the junction 2 reverse bias, so the C is connected to the positive terminal 
and the base is connected to the negative terminal and this reversed potential is called VCB now we have junction J1 forward bias and junction J2 reversed bias and that's what we need to make it in active mode so let's analyze the movement of electrons in the BGT so at the beginning when we don't have any volts applied to the transistor we have VB is equal to junction J1 and J2 and we have to analyze what happened to VB once we applied the volts so after applying the volts junction J1 will be in forward bias so the potential will reduce and the new potential will be VB minus VEB on the other hand junction J2 is reversed bias so the potential will increase and the new one will be VB plus VCB now after knowing the potentials we can easily analyze the movement of the electrons and the holes so because of the reduction happened in junction J1 the electrons will move from the emitter region to the base and recombined with the holes in the base region and as I said before B type semiconductor materials has more holes than electronics in it but there is something important you need to know that the base region is very small and it's lightly doped because of that most electrons pass to the collector region and very small amount of electrons from the emitter will recombine in the base I'll have to say it again the most electrons will pass junction J2 to the collector and very small amount of electrons from the emitter will recombine in the base so let's assume n is the number of electrons pass from the emitter to the base region and the collector region out of which 1 minus alpha n combined with the holes in the base region and alpha n is moved to the collector and that's what happened only 2 to 5 percent of electrons combined in the base and 95 to 98 percent pass to the collector and there is one more thing happen when we make bipolar junction transistor in active mode and it is the reverse saturation current junction J2 is reversed bias so there must be reversed saturation current and that saturation current we can call it ICO now we can have a relation between the current running in the branches IC is equal to alpha times of IE plus ICO this is the value of IC we can have a relation between IC, IE and IP because we know the movement of electrons so we can know the movement of the current going through the, the region or getting out of it and if we apply the Kirchhoff flow we will find e, IE is equal to IP plus IC and these two equations is very important and you need to know it now we are going to talk about the usage of transistor it can work as a switch well yeah we can use it as a controller in the circuit by making it in cutoff or saturation mode only as shown in the picture the second usage of transistor is amplification well yeah we can use the PGT as amplifier by making it in active mode only thank you guys for watching please hit a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe